Hi there everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and I'm a real estate agent and advisor here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And today I have with me the amazing, the miraculous, the legend himself, Robert Wilson. And um, we're here again for our little monthly update, market update video, even though we kind of failed to do one last month. We are here for the beginning of 2024 and we are bringing to you today some market predictions and some insights about what happened uh, at the end of 2023 in the Pittsburgh housing market. So Robert, I don't know if you want to start us off with some 2024 thoughts and predictions and we can sort of mix in our 2023 stuff in here. Yeah, let's, let's do it. So <laughs> We missed last month, but here's what you missed. Um, it was Christmas. Holiday there, mind you. Yeah, we were all busy. So at the end of the year, rates started to take a nice downtick for us for the first time in a while. We were seeing some lows that we hadn't seen in many months. So everything's headed the right way. Uh, kickoff of the year, kind of the same thing. The last 24, 48 hours, rates have ticked back up. We've had some strong economic data that has shown maybe we don't need to drop the rates, but it's showing most likely, big prediction time, March, we should have a substantial rate, rate hike, uh, not hike, gracious, <laughs> that one, we'll edit that one out. But it's showing most likely in March, we're gonna have a rate reduction. The Fed should even meet and reduce rates. That'll be huge. There could be three this year, there could be six this year. I'm hoping for 10, but realistically, we'll go for three. I mean, I'd like 10, because you know that'd be really helpful. But realistically, three, three to, three to five. Okay, so okay. So rates should be on the decline. Um, what are three? they now? Right now, you're in the upper sixes, low sevens. You okay. know, so we've come a long way. Everybody was hovering in the... Um, what, 7.99? We were in yeah. the seven nines and low eights before. And that's on conventional stuff. Government stuff's a little bit lower. Um, I've got yeah. government ones in the low sixes now, upper fives. So yeah. government will be FHA, VA, and USDA, for those of you who don't know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, rates are headed the right direction. Things are looking good. We have an election. Election years will typically bring lower rates. So yeah. primary start. Then we have the real election season in the fall, but I would imagine a summer of fun, lower rates, people buying houses. Yeah, so I think it's um, gonna get, I think it's gonna get pretty crazy uh, come March, April, May. I think there's gonna be a lot of competition. I think people are gonna be like waking up and uh, see, oh. seeing them low rates. <laughs> uh, already, people are coming out of the woodwork now. I mean, now that I'm talking yeah, they about, are. especially my VA and um, FHA stuff in the fives and even getting the other stuff down into the mid sixes. I did some conventional things, mid sixes here recently. Yeah. I've got people that are pulling the trigger. I've got a lot more activity happening mortgage wise. I think yeah. Did nine, nine applications yesterday. Wow. So it's like, there's been a big uptick. Yeah. It's happening. If you want to buy, get in now, get in before it's all going down. Um, you know, you're still <laughs> at the front end of the curve here. Hopefully this little bit of, um, tumultuous rate environment we have from the past couple of days will scare a couple of people away from you for competitors and you can capitalize. Yeah, so one question I have really quickly for you is, I don't know if you can explain to some of our viewers what the difference is between conventional and FHA, like benefits and drawbacks wise. Because sure. you say there's rates lower for FHA, so why shouldn't somebody just go with FHA instead of conventional? Great, great, great question there, Rachel. So you've got conventional that you know pretty much anybody would do. Um, there's a credit score limit for conventional, it's going to be a 620 FICO and up. So I mean, that's really the bulk of America anyway. Yeah. Uh, the advantage of VA obviously is for veterans, yeah. so that's its own yeah. thing. Um, USDA is for rural areas, but really let's, let's uh, look focus on the FHA, FHA yeah. and conventional. Mm -hmm. They're both great products. Uh, a lot of people are afraid of FHA, they shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Really on FHA, I mean, they're just, they're like, the FHA inspection. It's not a real inspection. It's just an appraiser that's looking for safety things. What we consider safety things, if you have stairs, we want handrails. People fall down the steps. I've done it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Grab that handrail. Yeah. So and then the other thing that's annoying is peeling paint. So um, unfortunately, we had lead in paint for a while, and they assumed that if you have peeling paint, someone's going to peel it off and start eating those little paint chips. But you'd have to eat, I think, copious amounts of lead chips yeah, to, to have an issue, amounts. but I don't really know. Um, I've never had a lot of paint to eat. So 
That's the thing. So if you have a house in decent shape, or even if you're willing to be like, hey, we'll paint a wall, there's no reason to be afraid of FHA. Yeah. So the advantage of FHA, though, is you do get a rate reduction. It's subsidized by the government. Yes. Other big thing for um, FHA is mortgage insurance. On a conventional loan, you get conventional loan, your mortgage insurance premium is determined by your down payment, how close you are to the 20%, where it goes away completely, as well as your credit score. So somebody that has an 802 credit score, they're going to pay less in mortgage insurance than your person at a 640. Yeah. With FHA, everybody gets the same mortgage insurance premium. Yeah. So if you're the guy in FHA that's a 599 credit score, which goes, it's fine for FHA, by the way. Yeah. So let's say you're a, a lower score, you don't get bludgeoned by okay. high yeah. mortgage insurance. Mm -hmm. So FHA gives you the lower rate. Um, drawback of FHA, there's lending, there's certain limits. In Western PA, we don't really run into that. It's not a huge concern. But um, the big drawback is there's a mortgage insurance premium. It's a one-time fee that's top, put onto the loan. It's rolled right into the loan amount. Um, most people don't really see that as a, a bad thing. Payment-wise, will come out the same. Mm -hmm. And conventional, pros of conventional, I got 1% down to conventional, which isn't really one, it's really three, but I give you two for free. So not everybody qualifies for that. Most mm -hmm. people, roughly, you make less than 90 grand a year and you're in Allegheny County or surrounding county, you'll qualify for that program where I'd give 2% of your down payment. Yeah, and that's a lot of people in, that's a lot of people in Allegheny County because our average income here is not that high. Correct, and that's why the limits were. So 80% of the people in theory should qualify for that, yeah. that free program. Yeah. So I've been doing a lot of conventional in lieu of the FHA lately. Yeah. Because I've got people cash to close, four or 5,000 bucks. Yeah, you know? that is just incredible. So, awesome. so super pumped about that <laughs> and hopefully the government will roll out even crazier stuff. Um, not everybody offers that conventional product I just mentioned of the 1%. Yeah. But if you call me directly, I do. He offers it. Um, what are the fees for FHA? Like that fee you're talking about, that one big fee that's wrapped in a loan, like what is that typically? Like is it a percentage of the loan? Like what type of percentage? Great question, Rachel. The upfront premium is going to be 1.75% of the loan amount. Okay. So you got a hundred thousand dollar loan, seventeen hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, that, that is a chunk of change though, depending on like how high. Yeah, it starts adding up. Yeah. You know, thousands of dollars pretty <laughs> yeah. quick. Uh, yeah, and I think that some people would, you know, if you have a high credit score and you do make a certain amount of money, then it only makes sense to go conventional at that point, really. You know, because you're not going to get. We don't. Because you, know, you kind of do get bludgeoned either way. You do. There's still a little bit of a hit, <laughs> but. There is, uh, with FHA, there's a pretty cool thing too, though. Let's say you get an FHA loan today, mm -hmm. and it's a, we're just going to go fake numbers, 6.5%, okay. okay? And then rates drop when it's been a year from now. You no longer have to credit qualify for the loan, which means when I refinance you, I don't have to get your pay stubs, your W-2s. So let's say you had a very uh, stable job when you bought the house, but you've now decided, hey, I'm a cleaner. I opened a 1099, I opened a cleaning company. And you don't show any income on paper, and you don't qualify. With FHA, we'll say, hey, You've made the payments. We know you can make the payments. If you can make them a six and a half, you can sure make them a five and a half. Yeah. So we'll drop it. You don't have to get another appraisal. You don't need anything. We pretty much make sure you have a pulse. Make sure you still live in the house because we're not going to reduce the rate on your rental. Yeah. But if you still live there, we'll drop your rate. And um, I structure those so they're very, very low cost, which would still be rolled into the loan. Mm -hmm. So there, you can ride that waterfall down and you don't have to still have a job in the future to qualify. Whereas wow. conventional... It's going to we're, be that same process. We're going to do it again. It has to be that same process. Yep. Interesting. I don't think I even knew that. VA does the same thing too. So it's just like, if you have one of those government loans, it's a pretty cool way to just be like, regardless of your new income situation, you still have to have a credit score. Yeah. So in an unlikely scenario that you're now a 490 credit, I cannot help you. <laughs> but if you still have a qualifying score of 580 and up, I can stream, streamline you right down. Perfect. Thank you for answering that question. It's yeah. very, help, very helpful for me, even. So let's take a look at some 2023 stuff numbers. Um, since we didn't, well, end of 2023 numbers, since we didn't really get there um, at the end of 2023. So really what we're looking at is December. Um, honestly, the markets, <laughs> there's not really that much of an update from November. Um, the market was just a little bit slower. That's to be expected. The market is always, 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 always slower around the holidays, um, especially Christmas when everybody's buying gifts, everybody's busy with families, everybody's traveling, everybody is broke. Yes. So, yeah, it's not a surprise that December was pretty slow. Um, the one thing that caught my eye, these ratios, so close, pri close price to list price ratio is a lot, a lot lower in December, meaning that people buyers were getting houses for 
um, a discounted price. So what you, what that says to me is that buyers were putting offers in on homes, and most likely they were the only people offering. So they were getting the price that they wanted. It's not significantly lower than 100%. It's what, like seven ninety seven point seven or something based on this graph. But you know that that could be a couple thousand dollars off the sales price. So. And it that tells me we probably have home inspections and the normal mm -hmm. things yeah. as well that you would want us to Yeah. Okay. Well, do you think those are going to start like going away again? You know, it depends on how competitive <laughs> it gets. I think we're <laughs> headed towards losing your ability to do what you want as the, the buyer. Yeah. Right now, this chart's showing us the buyer has a little bit of power. Definitely more power than you've had in Western Pennsylvania in quite a while. That being said, as things get warmer, spring markets come and it always comes. It's even come through the worst markets. If yeah. we're headed into a better market than we've had, my guess is buyers if you want to buy the house you're going to have to start waving things again which is not ideal but if you want the home that's we'll see what, what you got to do and you know i really do hate that that precedent was set because i know how anxious it makes buyers but i think like you know after covid i don't think anything's ever going to be really the same i think covid just like changed the whole entire not just the world but like change the entire real estate market. And there's just yeah. a new way that we do things. So I'm looking at days on market average and the average in December was, uh, it was what, 55, 53? 53, like 53 yep. days. So that's also telling me that homes are sitting for longer than they normally would. The lowest we had in 2023 was around 40 days. So that's like more than a week on market, which can seem like a lifetime to sellers. Trust me. I know, <laughs> um, but yeah. So this is also telling me that there's not as many, not as many um, biters in December. But as you can see, in February and March of last year, there's really not a lot of people so. things yeah. happening. So winter is always going to be a little bit slower. So if you're seeing this video in January and you'd like to close by the end of March, we can help you get moving. That's going to be your best bet to still be in a buyer's market relative buyer's market sure. where you can get the things that you want like you can do your inspections you can do your negotiations you can do your you know your sale and settlement or you know whatever you need to do so yep. right now is a great time like, yeah. like Rachel said all through March and realistically we only need three weeks to close so it's not like you have it's gonna take you 45 60 days it's gonna take you yeah 18 20 20 days somewhere in that ballpark if you would like to close that quickly but if it is gonna take you 60 days I would get moving now yes <laughs> You want to, you know, get all that stuff done before um, all the craziness uh, comes forth. A little elbow nudging seat, but they can't, oh, they can't see it. He's not they can't see our elbows nudging. No. I'm stronger than me. No, I'm not. So let's look at months of inventory. Let's do it. Um, so five months of inventory in December, which is not that, it's not that different from November, but it is kind of a lot from October. So again, this is just like probably holiday stuff. And, you know, based on last year's data, we're going to see five months of in inventory probably this year as well with um, January and February, but March is where we're going to start getting like, people are going to start snatching things up and then you can see that sort of that, that trend throughout the summer. But um, yeah, obviously June is going to be the heaviest selling month. So, I mean, this is all just stuff that... It's trending. This so. is trending. Like this, so this is just going to show that everything we said in our November video is pretty much the same. So, the winter is going to be your buyer's time to take advantage of things. If you like a good deal, we're in deal season right now. <laughs> this is what it tells me. Like we're in the absolute heart of deal season. Deal season will come to an end. It's a short window and we have, a, would say, at least 30 days left. And if you're sure, realistically, probably 60. But if you want to push it past 60 days, I think we're running out of deal season. So yeah. if you're a person that likes to get a discount, if you're like, hey, buy one, get one, you want a Groupon, this is your time to buy. Yeah. You want to pay full price? I'd say Mar March to you know August full price season. Yeah, I think so. And I also think that things are going to trend, I think, back towards what they were in 2022. I don't think things are ever going to go back to like 2020, 2021, because that was just like completely unprecedented. But I think, yeah, the market's going to sort of veer to where it was in 2022, where the rates were like in the fours. Sure. Like the sixes are the new fours. Yeah, I feel like. six is the new four, you know? <laughs> like, so I, I feel like if you have any idea of what the 2022 market was like, then that's sort of where we're going to be at. It's going to be competitive, not like absolutely insanely competitive, but still competitive enough where, yeah, 
the buyers aren't really going to get everything that they want and it's going to be a little bit harder for them to make out of a deal what they what their dream scenario would be i guess is you know the point but so, owning a home always better than renting yes almost always i mean there's some exceptions but it's usually better than renting so build that equity people annoying word of the way <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the annoying word of the day soft landings so that's what the Fed keeps talking about, trying to get a soft landing on rates. So we're already talking about bringing the rates down yeah. into a soft spot. It's possible they overshoot it and we just slide back into the fours and things just go berserk. So that's on the table. Yeah, Unlikely, and I don't, like, I know those sound good, but like, do you really want to put up with that level of competition if they do go, go back to the fours? That's what I always tell buyer, buyers. As a buyer, you don't. I'm like, do you, I mean, yeah, it sounds great, but like, do you really want to have to deal with all the things that come with that? Which is just really hard. It's like really hard on buyers in every way. And like the amount of an anxious buyers that I dealt with in 2022 was like unreal. Like it was just, it's something like I've never seen. So I don't know. There's, there's things to be thankful in every scenario, but we're in a good spot right now in this winter where I think you can get things at a decent rate and it's easier to buy. Right. So I think that's the takeaway. Rates yeah, that's are low. That's the takeaway for our January 2024. Yeah. Buy right now. Rates are good. And if they get crazy better, I'll refinance you. You know? Yeah. But, and he's got all the tools to do all the good things. And he's always like crunching those numbers and looking out for everybody and, you know, getting everybody the cheapest deal. Yeah. So, well, yeah. thanks, Rachel. But yeah. Appreciate you having me on the show today, but we yeah. got to get these buyers out there. So buy before you have to fight for the house. You know, that'd be my advice. Yeah, 100%. And thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this content, please press that like button, subscribe to my channel, leave comments below for feedback, any videos you'd like to see, any topics you'd like us to broach, we're here for you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.